Hello students, welcome back to the lecture series of software engineering course. Today, I will cover one of the most important SDLC model that is spiral model. Till now, I have covered two SDLC models. One was waterfall model and another was prototype model. So one of the common limitation of these two models that they are not appropriate for large complex projects having high risks. So spiral model came into existence, which was introduced by Barry Bohem in the year 1986. So let me write something about spiral model. So, uh, as you can see, uh, first point uh, that uh, is uh, spiral model was introduced by Barry Bohem in the year 1986 in his sub paper. Second, it provides support for risk handling. Third, the diagrammatic representation of spiral model looks like spirals with many loops into it. and the radical dimension, as you can see the horizontal dimension, the radi radial dimension of this model represents the cumulative, cumulative cost of the product and angular dimension of this model represents the progress made in completing each phase, each loop of this model, that the 360 degree around loop of this model is called the phases of software development life cycle. In each phase, uh, in this model, each phase begins with the design goals and ends with clients reviewing the progress and it provides incremental releases of the product. So by this diagrammatic representation, you can see uh, the activities of phases actually divided into four quadrants. The first quadrant which is actually determine objectives, alternatives, constraints. The second quadrant is about evaluate alternatives, identify and resolve risks. The third quadrant is about develop verified next level product. And the fourth quadrant is about plan next phase. So in the first quadrant that is determine objectives, alternatives, constraints. Actually in this uh, quadrant, requirements are gathered and objectives are identified and analyzed for the best possible uh, uh, method so in the sec in the second uh, all the all the alternative possible solutions are also proposed for finding the best possible solution in uh, with the constraints also has been uh, proposed in this model constraints related to the cost, time, schedule, risks, and etc. So uh, once the uh, software system objectives, alternatives, and constraints are understood, second quadrant are performed. So in the second quadrant, uh, all the uh, possible solutions are evaluated to select the best possible solution and the risk associated with that solution is actually identified and resolved with the help of best uh, possible strategy. And at last, at the end of this quadrant, a prototype is built for the best possible solution. Now, in the third quadrant, actually identified features are developed and verified for the testing. And in the fourth, in the fourth quadrant, actually, uh, it uh, the client evaluates uh, the client evaluates the uh, the uh, versions uh, the developed versions of the 
software and then plan for the next phase. So this is all about the uh, spiral model and one of the important feature of spiral model that it actually uh, provides the support for risk handling. Now as uh, there are some reasons when we need to use spiral model or there are some projects we need that is suitable for spiral model. So I will cover next key when we need to use the spiral model. So uh, when uh, pro, uh, prototype, when sorry, when spiral model is uh, suitable, the first reason in when when project size is large. Second is when releases are required to be frequent. When customer demands to uh, see uh, the working uh, products. When creation of prototypes are available because. Uh, prototypes, uh, building prototypes and then working on the actual model actually uh, resolves or actually uh, uh, resolves the risk handling process. When risk and cost evaluation are important for any project and when requirements are unclear and complex, then also this uh, model is suitable. For medium to high level, uh, high le uh, medium to high level risk projects are uh, are there then also this is this is appropriate and at last when changes may require at any time when customers are not clear about the requirements and frequently changes are made during the development process so these are the reasons we need to use uh, this spiral model for the software development process so now i will uh, explain about the advantages and disadvantages of spiral model. So, uh, as you can see, the advantages of a uh, spiral model are the first one, changing requirements can be easily accommodated. The second one, it allows extensive use of prototypes. The third one, requirements can be captured more accurately in this model. The fourth one, customer can see the developed product during the uh, at the early phases of the life cycle of the software product, projects with the known risks during the development process can be easily handled with this spiral model. And at last, it is recommended for the large and complex projects. So this model can handle large and complex projects with high number of risk. Now I will explain the disadvantages of this model. As you can see, uh, the one of the disadvantage of spiral model is the management and the process are very complex. The second is end of the project may not be known early because it may vary as uh, the, the number of loops are unknown to us at the early stage and it may vary from project to project 
सो इट मे नॉट डिफाइन कि वेन द प्रोजेक्ट विल बी एंडेड नॉट सुटेबल फॉर स्मॉल एंड लो रिस्क प्रोजेक्ट्स एट एज यूजिंग स्पैरल मॉडल फॉर स्मॉल प्रोजेक्ट्स और लो रिस्क प्रोजेक्ट्स इट कुड बी एक्सपेंसिव एज नंबर ऑफ फेजेस इज अनोन सो टाइम एस्टिमेशन इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट रिस्क एनालिसिस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट सो रिक्वायर्ड ऑलवेज एक्सपर्ट पीपल लार्ज नंबर ऑफ इंटरमीडिएट स्टेजेस रिक्वायर्स एक्सटेंसिव document as each every stage some prototype is developed some frequent released is actually deployed to the customer so obviously extensive documentation would also be there so hope you understand uh, when to use this parallel model and what are the uh, uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of parallel model So, and also spiral model is also called the meta model because it subsumes all the sdlc models so i'm ending over here hope you understand today's topic of spiral model if you do have any kind of query you may write in the comment box definitely i'll answer so thank you students keep watching and listening